Hello YouTube and welcome to our playthrough of Dungeons and Dragons Dragon of Ice Spire Peak. A quick disclaimer before you start watching the adventure. This was my very first time acting as Dungeon Master in my entire life. In addition to that, I have very little experience actually playing Dungeons and Dragons. However, I really like the game and I wanted to try my hat at DMing. And the Essentials Kit, as well as the Starter Kit, is supposed to be targeting people who are brand new to Dungeons & Dragons, both as players and as Dungeon Masters. The guys I'm playing with in this adventure have a lot more experience uh, both playing the game and DMing themselves than I do. So throughout the adventure, I'm going to be asking them perhaps stupid questions, silly questions, these kinds of things, as you would expect from any brand new DM. So just know that before you watch the adventure, and think that I'm this bumbling, fumbling fool. Uh, just I'm just simply brand new. With that said, I hope you enjoy our game. All right, yeah. So you guys go to bed, and uh, you know it's a it's an uneventful night. Get your get full rest in. Not that you necessarily needed full rest or anything, but. Um, the, ne the next morning comes, the sun comes up and starts peering through a couple of the windows on the outer wall there. And, and from who, who wakes up first? I assume Sanjar, since he didn't, <laughs> yeah, I assume he needed so. half the amount of sleep. Yeah. And even, even if you are sleeping later, you're still pretty much at least semi-conscious so you start hearing the morning sounds of activity uh, starting to pick up. The people that are really early to get up, you know, to go tend to their fields or whatever it is that they're doing, and um, just you know, yeah, as the you know as the minutes go by, 10, 20, 30 minutes, you, know, you just it, the the noises of activity increase, as does the amount of light that's uh, coming in through the coming in through the window. Cool. I um, assume after some yeah, point wake everybody up. wakes up. Yeah, I'm going to be waiting for the other two in the hallway. All right, Seth, do you, when do you think you're going to wake up? Um, I imagine, like, at latest 8, eight in the morning. Okay, yeah, so so by that point, you know, it's, it's pretty active, um, at least outside, you know, you hear plenty of activity and, and the place isn't very big. So you can definitely hear, uh, certain kitchen noises. Um, and you can even smell some of the, some of the drinks that are, you know, being made by the, the innkeeper that's, you know, kind of getting back there behind the counter, taking up his position for the day. Uh, you can sort of smell some of them smells coming into your room at this point. But nobody's gonna like come down the hall and knock on your doors or anything. Force you to get yeah. up. Get up, get out of here, you lazy bums. Yeah, since we'll eventually get up and head towards the uh counter for breakfast. Ah. Good morning, guys. Good to see you again. Yeah, I just slap the silver onto the counter. Uh yes, if I can get whatever you people serve for breakfast around here. I'll appreciate it. Uh, yeah, it changes uh, day to day, week to week, but uh, yeah, I'll have the kitchen uh, put you put you guys something together. Are you all going to be eating, or just you? I, I'm going to flick a silver towards him as well. All right, we'll we'll say probably Donabella does as well. Uh, so you guys are going to sit down there at the bar or over at a table. Um, um, I'll just eat at the bar. Yeah, I was going to say. Bar's probably fine. All right, so after not very long passes, they, cause they've kind of got some of the stuff prepared. Uh, the the guy the, the behind the bar just slides the uh, plates up there in front of you and says uh so you know got any plans for today oh yes uh we were actually gonna go speak to the town master about those uh dwarven 
ruins that were discovered nearby. And any other jobs you might have. Oh yes, and you know, money's nice as well. Oh yeah, yeah. I've heard uh, I've heard talk about that. The uh, the ruins. Uh, they I have yeah. They've been saying there are some dwarves out there. Uh, some site was found, and they're doing some digging. I, I don't really know what it's all about. Uh, I've heard some other people going out and warning different people around the area of this dragon because they apparently, you know, they're just trying to make sure the word gets spread. But uh, apparently, there's some there's some gnomes as well that uh, have something something going on. Uh, I don't I don't really know a lot about. It. I don't pay attention to the uh, to the adventuring stuff. Well, gnomes, you say. Interesting little people. <laughs> Funny little bastards, aren't they? Yeah, there was some job posting, some reclusive rock gnomes. Yeah, again, like I said, I don't, I don't pay a lot of attention to it. But uh, you said you're going to go see the town master. That's definitely, definitely who you need to talk to about these kinds of things. Yep, and I just like finish the breakfast. Well, I'm gonna go speak with the town master. All right, yeah. So all uh, stand up immediately <laughs> and uh, head out as well. Yeah, your breakfast isn't super complicated or anything. It's just kind of this pile of mush, but it's uh, it's it's protein and mm. uh, so it's some lovely guys, mush. Yeah. So you guys get your get your meal. You head back out on the street there and. Uh, Head over to the Tau Master Hall, and assume you're gonna go knock on his door or something like that. Yeah, oh. is there a, a job board outside? Yeah, the there's a job board out there. It's uh, it's kind of looks like one of those like street corner things where people have like rock concert type of thing and there's like 50 of them pasted over top of the ones that were there before it's kind of a mess uh the most prominent thing that you see up on the board is just a sign that says adventures talk to the town master seek out the town master that seems pretty direct yeah so the town master had, had, had an extra step to it didn't they yeah, the Town Master's Hall has a, has sturdy stone walls, a pitched wooden roof, and a bell tower out on the back. And yeah, you see that you see that job board there, and it's it's written in common. Yeah, I I go to see if like the front door is open. You go knock on the door. Well, if it's unlocked, I'm just gonna open it. It's locked. All right, I knock on it. <laughs> so yeah, as you knock on the town master's door, you hear some scuffling about, and uh, eventually he he comes to the door. He doesn't open it. And he says, uh, "He says, who are you? What do you want?" Uh, I heard about those uh, dwarven ruins. You know, jobs perhaps. Ah, so so your adventures of the sorts. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, there uh how how do you how did you hear about the dwarven excavation? Uh the owner of the stone giant inn told me about it. Ah, okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, I'm glad I'm glad he sent you guys over this way. I definitely have a, a job that uh I've been trying to find somebody who can who can go out and uh warn these dwarves. And then he kind of, he's kind of a very odd fellow. He has this little slip of paper and he just slides it under the door to you guys. And he's like, you can, you can read all about it on here in uh, one second and I'll give you guys that slip. I'm going to drop it into the discord. All right. I'm going to get some water here back. I sort of uh, look down at it and read it and say, 
Yeah. Seems fair. Hey, you got anything else, though? Well, uh, I do have a couple jobs going on right now, but I'm very worried about these dwarves. And uh, I, 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 if, if you guys can, I'd really like you to head out there and warn these guys that there's this dragon flying about because uh, they're good people and don't want anything to happen to them and they're so caught up in their in their, in their work and their mining they may not even be aware. So it's a pretty easy job. You don't even have to uh, you know, do anything really. You just have to send them, send them, send them the message from the town master. Eh, easy money, I suppose. Very right back. He kind of, at, at that comment, he kind of scuffles a little bit. Uh, yeah. Uh, so anyway, uh, except I put that quest into the uh, Discord. This is kind of, this, this is what he has on this slip of paper. He just literally slides it under the door. He doesn't even open the door. Hmm. You seem to be a pretty indirect fellow, ain't you? Well, you know, for all I know, you could be dragons in disguise. I, I say dracon- I say draconic. Are you sure about that? Yeah, it's noise in his head. He doesn't know what you're saying. Uh, he doesn't even recognize it as draconic. Probably not. No. Okay, fair enough. Well, we'll be sure not to eat you when we come back for your money. I say as I sort of walk off. He he's very <laughs> intimidated by that statement, but. Uh... <laughs> Because he, he's just he's just a complete wreck. He's so nervous about these dragons flying around. He's just like, that's not funny. Uh, don't worry. There's probably only one. They don't like hanging out with groups most of the time. This the might only be a good dragon though. is a dead dragon, he says. Uh, I'm sure there's plenty of dragonborn that will take offense to that comment. Be that as it may, this beast flying around is terrorizing the town and the local area and we don't know what he wants and or she we don't know and it's just it's it's too much i can't deal with it well i'm sure it's time will come at some point oh god willing yes oh yes may foth be with you and i uh walk off so about these, so he doesn't quite hear you walk out. So about these dwarves, are you going to uh, take care of this for me? And he's yes, kind of and then some. All right, well, I'll be waiting to hear back from you if you make it back. All right, I don't really respond to that last comment. I'm already sort of uh, waiting for set a uh, little ways from the door so uh in addition to this card he does tell you guys that the location is about 15 miles southwest of Fandolin, and uh so it's it's within a, it's well within a day's travel so you know you don't even have to travel an entire day to get to this particular location probably can't get down there and back in one day but you can definitely get down there Well, I'm sure we'll be hurry now. We'll get there by the evening. Oh, I'm sure we'll hurry. Full of ruins. It's your favorite. Oh, uh, all ruins are my favorites. All right, so you guys uh, head out of town? Uh, yep. Yeah, huh? All right, so we're going to say you probably go out like this way because it's going to be southwest, so you go out that way. And uh, let's see, let's throw this up. Cue some travel music. So it's, it's, it's an uneventful travel down to this location and you don't have any problems finding it. Uh, the, the information you got from the town master was sufficient and the path is uh, clear enough that, yeah, you get down, you get down there with no problem. So it's uh it's 15 miles which i think is um what was that like five hours of travel something like that don't know that it just says one day of travel is 24 miles so it's 
about a half day's travel, a little more than a half day's travel. So I'm going to say it takes you guys about five hours to get down there. So you probably arrive, um, what would that be, like one or so in the afternoon, one or two in the afternoon. And when you arrive, one second. So you should be looking at this like gray area here. If I got the right map up, I'm assuming you see this like gray. Thing. Yeah, we. S yeah. We it's see like a, a fissure yeah, sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, like a fissure. Yeah, the canyon's rocky walls rise to a height of 80 feet at the end of the canyon, kind of up in this area here. A 20-foot-high wall of black stone has a broken gate carved into it with one stone door hanging precariously by a hinge and the other door missing. Beyond this open gate, in the shadow of a, of a great mountain to the east, lies a ruined settlement, and all is quiet. So I'm just going to assume that you travel up through that gated area. I may have made, like, too many maps here, but... Yeah, I I try to stay silent along the way till we see uh, any life. Um, by the way, I will say if I like see any writing on any walls, I will see if I can read it. Okay. If I like spy any like Jorvan uh, runes or something like that. Yeah, so as you, as you go through these doors, you can see that this is a, this was once sort of like this entrance to a temple of some kind, but it's just been completely destroyed. And uh, it's very, very old. It's, it's, it's ancient. And whoever has come here recently has been unearthing some of the, some of the structure that you can kind of see there on the ground, like these base of these walls is just... Uh, stuff that they've kind of unearthed, but whatever was here is, is no longer. And all you can kind of tell from going in and around this area here is that, uh, you know, there, there's nobody around and you would easily be able to see if there was because these aren't like high walls or anything. They're just, you know, a stone high. And so there's really nothing in this area. It's just It's just completely ruined. And you did say you were going through here quietly. Yes. Basically. Yeah, step in. Yeah, I just try to keep my eye open for anything interesting. Okay. Yeah, you keep you keep your eye out. And uh yeah, it's it's such a it's the whole area is so completely void that it's just rubble and you know, you can pretty easily tell that the side of the canyon is just solid rock and the, the ground you're walking on is just rubble and rock. There's there's really nothing here. Maybe they went on break? Yeah, I would, you would think there would be some, uh, you know, workers around. The Jorps are... Are quite the have quite the work ethic. Ethic. Normally, yeah. Maybe it's the time for ale. Time for ale. Yes, hey, it's always the time for ale. All right. So as you guys uh, kind of continue through this area, and again, there's there's no there's nothing jumping out at you at this point or anything like that um i'm gonna i'm assuming you're just kind of following this path along here yeah kind of thing more or less all right so as you pass through these doors here let me change this over wait that is the wrong oh. one my bad is that a dungeon Wait, my bad. Wrong one. You're still here. <laughs> <laughs> As you pass into this area, uh, 
a partially collapsed 10-foot wall separates this courtyard from the settlement west of it. So this wall here kind of is, is, is this sort of natural separation between these two points here. And uh, three heaps of rubble are piled up in this area, hewn from the canyon's back wall. A 30-foot-high temple facade features steps rising to a stone platform. Cut into this facade is a 10-foot-high open doorway flanked by crumbling life-size granite statues of cloaked dwarves. Evil grins can be seen on their weather-worn faces. And as you step right through this area, these two dwarves pop out from behind these rocks and kind of, they're just kind of keeping an eye on you and they're kind of get the, give you this inquisitive look. Uh, can, can we help you? I say in Dorvis, ah, greetings, friends. We are just uh, looking for your leader. We uh, bring Warden from Pendellin. Pendellin. Well, we don't have a leader. It's just the two of us. Uh, what? What's this warning? You say there's only the two of you. Yep, just me and my wife. I'm Dazzlin, and this is Norbus. Huh. Well, there's been some sightings of a white dragon lately in the area. And the town master felt it was appropriate that we, that he sends some people, such as us, to warn the expedition that there might be some potential danger. A dragon, you say? Yeah. Uh, what was their names again? Let me type it in here. It's Davin and Nobis. Dazlin. I'll type it in here. Daz. Dazlin. Norbus. While they're having this conversation, by the way, I just, I just sort of uh, look over to um. To Donna Bella, I go. You catching anything these guys are saying? And I assume she just kind of looks back at you yeah. and uh, just they're talking about the dragon and the and the warning. Uh huh. Yeah, I I say uh, we should probably speak in the common tongue so our. So my friends could understand us. So, uh, yeah, so they'll switch to common when you do. All right. And now speaking in common. Are you sure it's only the two of you? I imagine there will at least be a dozen dwarves working here. Well, this location is, uh, it, it's, it's just this ruined location that we found and so far uh haven't really found much of anything useful so they just kind of have us down here digging away trying to see if there's anything worthwhile but currently we have a bit of a problem there's a some kind of creature inside so we're just hanging out out here till it till it goes away uh i don't suppose you guys would be able to go in and deal with it, would you? A creature, you say? What kind? It's this big, oozy, jelly mess that just kind of slings around and creeps on the walls. And I think I've seen it on the ceiling before, too. And it's just... I, I, I don't know what to do about it. But it we, we, can't, uh, we can't carry on with our work until it's gone. As in a fussy mess, or as in a sort of translucent, you know, slime? That's what you're saying to us. Yeah, I would say it's translucent-ish in nature. It's uh, kind of this big blob of jelly that just slimes around in there, and it seems pretty dangerous. So, so yeah, we don't really know how to how to get on with our work. Until this thing is until this thing's dealt with. 
Must be dealing with a slime then. Nasty creatures. Yeah. Well, they're killable enough. We can deal with this this creature on one condition, though. What's we that? get something out of it? That's all. Any, any uh, artifacts that we find, we get first. How do you common people say it? Um, dibs. dibs on. They kind of look at each other and they're like, "Well, I can't really give you anything we find here. I mean, that's uh, well." But uh, I tell you what, any hold up. This... I will. I will give it give it to you. Don't get me wrong. I will just like to at least expect it first. Hmm. Yeah. Work doesn't come free these days. Yeah, yeah, of course not. And uh, they, he holds up a, this stone. It kind of looks like a. It's probably about the size of a of a playing card, and it has kind of this like ear carved into it. And he says, you know, if if you can get rid of this this creature and allow us to get on with our work, um, I, I can give you these stones. They allow you to uh, to talk to somebody far away. And he and then he holds up the second one. He kind of shows that they're very they're both pretty much. Oh, those, oh, those must be sending stones then. And he nods. I yeah, these are sending stones. <sighs> Nifty little. Nifty little things. Yeah, their their use is limited, useful. but uh, they can come in quite handy in some situations. I guess so. All right. Sounds like a good deal to me. But what if we need it while we're in there? Could you give us those for us to head in with? Maybe? I'm not really in the habit of paying for my work before it's done. Call it uh, a deposit. Kind of uh, rubs his beard there a little bit and he says, well, my word is my bond and if you can get rid of this creature, I I'll give you these sending stones, but I, I just, I can't, I don't know you guys. Uh, you did say that you were from Phandalin, but uh, even so, I, I don't know you guys, but if, if you take care of this, you, uh, these are yours. Absolutely. No questions asked. Okay. If we die, it's on you. Yeah, he kind of just... That's that, that sort of head in. He kind of has this, like, whatever expression because he's like, don't know you. All right. So, um, wow. yeah. One second here. So... As you head into this room here, I now it should be mostly invisible to you guys. Mm-hmm. Yep. You got that fog of war on. Yeah, so it's very dark in here, although, obviously, uh, Xandro, you have no problem with that. In fact, you're probably more at ease inside of this temple. Um, but the others, uh, let me see, you're... Sept, uh, I forget if you're human... I am human. Yeah, you're human, and so is Donabella. So the other two, they're, they can see uh, quite well into the corridor, but it, be much beyond that, it's just it's getting, you know, it's quite dark. So, but as you as you step into this corridor, um, you know, you can see as you're as you're feeling along the wall, you know, you can see there's a A bit of a, of a of a spot here, and then the doors continue onwards in, and and that's about all you can see. And while yeah, you're taking um, that in, I'm gonna have to do one thing on my side because I completely forgot. I thought it was yeah. Like I I light a torch. Okay, so yeah, as you as you light your torch, um, it does help both you and Dontella see much uh, much more clearly into the area but uh just give me one second i have to get another image yeah so as you guys come into this room you you see this blob of creature let me see if i can put it on here i'm just gonna say that's gonna have to be its token because i don't 
have the whole token thing for it. And um, yeah, you just immediately spot this thing, and it's just kind of lurking around there on the floor. Oh, I love mustard jellies. Anyways, um, yeah, I look towards Andrew, and I say, you look like the sneaky type. Uh, you mind uh, scouting out the head a little bit? We're going to nod. Um, we're going to turn back to um, Donabella um, and just sort of tell her to just wait there, wait just behind us as I try and sneak up further into the hall. Okay. Let me see here. I don't think it can see you necessarily. It can see through. I don't think they can really see through sight. Yeah, it's, it's I remember right, like. stack card here is a little. Oh, wait, here we go. Senses, uh, blind sight, 60 feet. It's blind beyond 60 feet. So I would say it is. Oh. Yeah, it says it, says it senses as uh, blind for 60 feet. Or blind sight at 60 feet. And, and in parentheses, it says it's blind beyond that radius. So it cannot see past 60 feet. And I do think you guys are probably. Yeah. So it would have been able, if it, you know, to the extent that it was noticing in this direction it would have uh sensed that you were coming through this corridor so i would say you don't get like a surprise round or anything like that so roll initiative ah oh, it's my favorite thing today uh, yes uh can i see more of this hall by the way uh yeah, yeah from where you okay so you pass by this area here you passed by this area here, and I would say, as you did, um, you would have got a pretty good clear shot into that rubble pile. And from where you're at now, you can, I would say, definitely see like that much. And you'd probably also be able to see here as well. That pillar right. that's like right here is going to still still be obstructing uh, some of your view back into this area back here. Um, and I would say, and, and given that these guys have light sources as they are, as they're walking in, cause I can't obviously adjust the, uh, the, the area that I'm revealing based on the individual person. So, all right, one second, I have to get rid of the spider. All right. And, uh, which, uh, so let me go back to this. You... So your initiative was eight, so this old initiative goes away. And your initiative was four, so this old one goes away. All right, and I will roll for the jelly. See here Not here. too good on this clip, I'll say. We were more shocked by it than it was of us. Yeah, I'll... Well, definitely it, say Set has like read about these creatures, but he's never saw one in person. So add to its turn, and it also rolled terrible, which is I suppose a good thing. So we'll go this way here, and then uh, on the bell is she going to engage? Is she going to stay back and just? Um, I'd say she's still roll initiative. She's ready. Okay, uh, if you want to just type it in as, like, slash roll. Um, she gets a plus one to her initiative. <laughs> what is there we go, rules? we're all the worst. <laughs> Everybody was terrible. Alright, so I will do my very best to make sure I handle this creature correctly. But... Uh, Xandro, it looks like you have the, the good first go. Okay, so I'm going to draw my bow, <coughs> pull back an arrow. Um, I forgot to actually take an arrow away from last time, so I'll take away two now. Um, and just fire the arrow straight at the fucking slime bastard. 
17 is definitely a hit. Cow, five damage. Five damage, okay, let me make a note. Okay. Cool, so, and I'm gonna attempt to run sort of take cover here a little bit, yeah. Take cover here. Okay. So that's you and now uh actually I suppose we have to decide. So what is your dexterity? You're probably definitely higher uh, than this guy. Fourteen. Yeah, you're higher, so you go first. Yeah, I I walk forward. Um, yeah, I can make it there on time. And about halfway through walking there, I, uh, I, like, pull out my, uh, Sybil Foth, and you see, like, these hieroglyphics, like, appear in the ear around me. And I just, like, blast them towards the slime. I uh, cast a guided bolt at it. Okay, and, um... Uh, baby DM question here. Now, uh, does the slime roll a saving throw for that, or is that just a hit? Um, no. Okay. It's just a hit. All right, and that 24 is definitely a hit. Yeah, 13 radiant, and it might need to make a saving throw now. Let me check. Oh, no, it doesn't. Okay. All right, the next uh, attack roll against the creature will have advantage. Have advantage. Okay, so let me just make a note of that 40, or, well... Minus thirteen, rather. Yeah, you use that last set, last session that we played in the the Friday group. Yes, you did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was a very nice. All right, so the jelly is sort of taking these hits, and it's so. Are you standing right next to it now? Uh, if I could backtrack, maybe like. Five feet away, maybe like a little bit away from it. Does it get an attack of opportunity if you do that? Well, it's not. Well, you know, we'll just say I'm over here. Because I can't. I was decision. thinking that you were standing back here and you cast it as a. As yeah, a... I basically cast it as I was like moving forward towards it. Okay, so you're right now. You're on top of the thing. Okay, so yeah. the uh, it so it, it what it's going to do is. Read about its attacks here. All right, so does an eighteen hit? Uh, it just hits. Just hits. Okay, so. Oh, oh. And it's gonna do. Seven. Wow, that's gonna knock you out. That's. <gasps> 2d6 plus 2. That's 9 damage. I'm at 1 HP. Oh, one fuck. HP. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so yeah, this uh, this slime jelly creature just kind of, since you're right there next to you, it just kind of whips out this antennae looking jelly thing and it kind of wraps around your throat a little bit and it just kind of pulls back and as it does... You just feel this like stinging sensation in your neck. It's like, uh, you know, it's like a burning or something from this sort of acidic uh, tentacles. Yeah, and actually, let me see, because I think. Oh wait! Know. Oh god! This might be one of those monsters that eat away at your armor. I'm just double checking to make sure it doesn't like cause a condition or anything. I don't believe so. Okay, so it took its turn, and then what is your sidekick going to do? Um, seeing that um, thingy, just, Sept has just been hit quite badly with this uh, by this slime. Um, just gonna run up and cure wounds him. Okay. So she has to sort of like touch him, um, and it's one d eight plus two, I believe. Yeah, one d eight plus two to heal him. All right. So do you want to describe uh, what she, what it looks like, what her healing power looks like? 
Um, I imagine it's sort of similar to how a cleric would heal, like a, a bright golden sort of light as she uh, runs up um, and sort of like basically like holds his shoulder almost um, as the light sort of seeps onto onto set. Oh yeah, I guess I have to move her up here to do that because I don't think you have control of yes, that token. I don't, I don't think so. No, I don't. I don't know if I can give you control of it. Uh... Uh, one day plus two, boosh, nine damage. Yeah, <laughs> so, what the slime taketh away, the sidekick giveth back. And let me actually check: Would she be able to duck back here? Um, yeah, she just stayed put. She, like, she's not there. Yeah, as she heals like, me, I just thirty feet of movement. Yeah, I look back at her and I just say. I wonder when, where you learn how to do that. All right, so that's going to be all her movement then, so she probably can't move. So mm -hmm. Okay, so then the drow elf is up to bat. All right, so I sort of want to move over this way a little bit. Right. As you do, you can definitely start seeing more of the room. Fantastic. So I want to get up behind it. Probably see up here as well. All right, so it's now flanked. Um. Oh, that means I get double advantage. I'm kidding. <laughs> double advantage doesn't count. I wish it did. Um. So yeah, I'm gonna pull out my rapier. Um, and just gonna sort of thrust at it, like a fencer. Like a slashing type of thing. Yeah. Okay. Rapier, go. 15 to hit. Uh, 15 definitely hits. Fantastic. Rolling damage. It's 6 damage. Alright, so that's going to be that. Let me check one thing here. Okay. Yes, okay. So, I don't have... so what happens is when you when you swing with your rapier, which is if just making double sure that's a sword, right? <laughs> Yes. So basically, yeah, you swing into this jelly creature and you cut it in half. You do a tremendous amount of damage to it, but you cut it in half in the process. So uh -oh. that means there are now that... two jellies. And I'll say that... Uh, oh, fuck. This one's here right next to it. Like it just kind of, yeah, it just kind of did that kind of thing where it just kind of sliced it into two pieces. And now I'm going to say... That one has that, and that one has that. Okay. Ah, the fuck? Now they're half uh, the size. It's half the size that it was before, but it's yeah. now two pieces. Yeah, um, if you hold down alt while scaling a token, you can, like, make it smaller than square. Okay, let me give that a shot. Let me not lose my page here. Actually, page 60. Okay, that works. Ah, uh, look at them. I'm going to put it over on that side, the other one. They're adorable. Uh, Seth's totally going to put you in a vial later. Um, yeah, upon like seeing them split, I look towards the one that like split off to the, we'll say left, and I... Let me color code them for you. I'll do red. I basically hold up my hand, uh, cast in Sacred Flame. On one of them. Okay. Okay, uh, Dick DC 13 dexterity saving throw. Does that guess it would be red? Uh, why is it a saving throw? Because it's a, a sacred flame. You have to. It's basically make the saving throw or take damage. Okay. Hang on, I'm I'm not sure I'm understanding. Are you are you casting sacred flame at it? Yes. Okay. And so you're if it has a AC lower than thirteen, it hits. No, it has to make a saving throw. Okay. Sorry so guys. Sorry guys. 
And if it gets over 13, it won't take damage. So I roll a d20, and there aren't any pluses that it gets or anything like that, near as I can tell. What's its, it's... Uh, dexterity modifier? Negative 2. So, yeah, yeah. that would be d20 minus 2. Alright, thank you guys for clarifying. So that's a 10, minus 2 is an 8. And... Yeah, okay. Nothing. It takes... Yeah, it takes a grand total of one radiant damage. Wow. All right. And that was uh, the red one or the blue one that you hit. Yeah. Set fails. He, hit, he didn't pray hard enough. All right. So let me just keep track of these guys separately. And thank you guys for putting up with my fumblery. <laughs> oh, that's fine. That's why we're here. All right. So the, uh, the, the, the slimes go and they now have two attacks basically and the red one is going to attack set because he just you know he feels offended by the fact that he was just burned so he's going to take a, a a slithery swing at set again which is plus four and and that's plus four, so what is that? Does a nine hit? No. Okay. Plus attack, plus four. Yeah, four, okay. And that's a five foot reach, so you're definitely within reach. And then let me check on the other one. So you're both basically the same. So this one uh, that just got split off by that rapier is going to attack the, the drow elf. Uh oh, this was not me. Yeah. Nineteen that's plus that. four, yeah. so that's a twenty-three. Which oh, I okay. yeah. All right, so I might see a four. That's fourteen even. So two d six plus two. Don't be high. Don't be high. Basically, just don't get a six. Don't get two threes. <sighs> so that's plus two. So that's two, three, two, five. Oh, okay. <laughs> Ow. Are you still standing? I'm still standing. All right. So that is the slime's turns out of the way, or the jelly's turns out of the way. And they're both still standing. They're still standing. Okay. Um. So the sidekick gets to do something. On... Donabella's turn. I think she's going to retreat sort of up here-ish. Okay. This sort of way. So probably to that square so she can still see the slimy wimies. I'm going to reveal some more area because if you guys have torches there, you definitely can now see, uh, like, for sure here and probably this corner. The only part that might be dark is, like, right behind the... Uh, Yeah. Yeah, so she's going to move sort of up here. And um, she's going to try and secret flame the red one as well. Yeah, behind, I'm going to say maybe right behind those columns. It's still a bit shadowy. Mm-hmm. Okay, so she moves uh, like, like around here, basically. Yeah. She's going to sacred flame the red slime. Okay. Which is going to be a DC 12 dexterity save. Okay. Uh, and I know we just covered this, but I... Have... So you just roll a D20 minus 2 minus again. Two, right. Okay. So 18 minus 2 is 12. Ooh. That's um, not to you. Will it go to the attacker or the defender? I believe it's to normally the it's normally it's to the attacker. Oh. Yes, yeah, to yeah. the attacker. So, uh, so that'd be a hit, then, wouldn't it? I believe so, right? Because if if I rolled it, I'd have to roll a, a fourteen or higher. I'm a little. Um, or actually, I think if it like actually beats the DC, it will be a. 
It's it's a be a save. It'll be a save. Right? I'll check real quick. Yeah, I'm a little more clear. Like on the when weapons do damage, it's a little more straightforward. But yeah, I got a 14 on the roll. Minus two puts me at 12, which is lower than that dexterity save. Okay, yeah. Yeah, he succeeded, so he didn't take any damage. Okay. All right. Rip. Rip. All right. So the drow elf gets to go. Oh, man. Um, I don't have my thing yet. Oh, no. Okay. Um, in that case... Fuck it. I'm going to keep on... No, I'm not going away. <laughs> so I'm going to take a disengage action. Uh, and run up there. Okay. So That's my turn. <laughs> okay. Just leave me to die. Um... Don't worry, I've got a plan. Hmm. I'm not sure if I feel like wasting another spell slot. Um, nope, I'm, I'm just going to try a sacred flame it again. Alright, uh, DC 13. Alright, so again. D20 minus 2. That is a 4, so that's a 2 total, so that's definitely a hit. Alright, uh, it takes. Red takes 6 radiant damage. Red takes 6 radiant damage. So red is extremely dead, dead. hurt. Extremely hurt. Oh, He's just like uh, wiggling dead. away. Like... But he's still right, standing. Um, I guess I just hold my ground then. Okay. Alright, so red is uh, on his last molecule of gelatin but with that last molecule of gelatin he kind of whips out that little antenna that he's got and he kind of cracks it at you and he gets a plus four that is a one so that is a five so that's a critical fumble so um just misses period i love that as a thing a critical fumble I'm yeah, going to start calling that from now on. I love it. So that means the blue one, the only creature in sight is Sept. So he's also, the blue creature is also going to attack Sept. That is a five. So it is a nine hit. Definitely not. Okay. So the gelatins have been, been heavily affected by the damage they've taken and their, their aim is just not true. Yeah. For so um. Go by ahead. the way, my AC is eighteen. Okay. Oh yeah, I see it on there now. All right, so that'll be easy. Cool. What does the sidekick do? Donna Bella is going to use her final spell slot to uh, cure wounds Zandro. Which, yeah, one d eight. Plus two. Huh, thanks, you bitch. <laughs> she's so terrified that her spells just like she's like muttering her words. God, you right. have saved. Is she gonna Don't stay put? Her. Um yeah, she's gonna stay put. Alright. I'm gonna say you guys see here as well. Open up some more of this. And you were back here, so you probably saw all the way around this thing by now. And you can see all the way around that. Okay. Alright, so, uh, Xandro. Xandro. The red one is, uh, yeah, it's, it's coughing whatever, like, 
version of blood it has. It's like... <laughs> Aww. I almost feel bad. <laughs> I'm going to circle around, uh, draw my bow. Uh, I'm going to shout, a dick face, as I release an arrow into Mr. Blue. Okay. That's 24. definitely a hit. Pacow. Pacow. Another six damage. Okay, so the uh, arrow goes into this blue, th this this other jelly guy, and it just kind of goes in, and at first it just looks like it's absorbing it, but then it seems to hit some sort of vital part of it, and it's like... <laughs> <laughs> but it's still standing. And do you retreat, or...? Um, I've used all my movement. Okay. Set. Uh, is it my turn? Yeah. Right. Um, How are you on health at the moment? I don't remember where you were at. Oh, I'm I'm fine. Okay. Oh yeah, uh... Yeah, I think I'm just gonna try to finish off uh, Red with, uh... You guessed it, second... Okay. <laughs> so I gotta do uh, d20 and that's a three minus two is a one so that's All right. definitely six more radiant and at that you completely incinerate red it just shrivels up and turns into just a puddle of ooh at this point and it is down yeah you, you hear uh set yell out into the fires of history you go and I uh, walk over here. Okay. That's the end of my turn. Alright, so the one gelatin blob that's left, it's going it's it's got a very small range, so it basically has to attack whatever is literally right next to it. So it's going to attack set. And plus four. So eighteen plus four. That hits. Uh oh. And it's two D six plus two. What's that? Two, four, five, six, eight. Eight damage. Eight. Yeah. Uh, that's full damage. All right, I'm still up. But I tell you that I was telling you guys they make these uh, startings like surprisingly difficult, and I'm even using the easier version of it. It's <laughs> crazy. Oh, uh, we're good. Mental. All right, so the slime again does its basically the only thing that its little primitive brain knows how to do, and it just kind of whips out its gelatinous body at you, and you just kind of feel this burning and. Is it, and then it kind of recoils back in. Donna Bella Donna is gonna Bella. go for Sacred Flame with the Sacred Flame lads. All right, play. <laughs> Everyone's favorite. <laughs> Seems to be doing the trick. Um, so it's a DC of twelve. Uh, let me roll that damage just in case. I don't have anything actually like to show up because I don't actually have a character sheet. Okay. So it's actually just a, a DC spell save of 12 All right, is what so, it says on her box. So for that, then I'm just going to roll the D20 subtract 2. Mm-hmm. That is a 16 minus 2 is a 14. Nah. All right. He saves. Oh, Donabella. So how does that okay. look when she does her cast? I guess she's still looking a l like very panicked. Um, so she's sort of fumbling around with the fire, and it sort of just like lands next to it, almost like it doesn't even hurt. It, it doesn't even flinch. Yeah. So she's kind of cast her thing, and she's just still maybe a little disoriented from all this going on, and misses. So Xandro. I'm going for another bow attack because there's no way I'm getting up close and personal to this. <laughs> Bastard. 
Okay. Uh, so, draw another arrow from my quiver. Shoot it. Oh, these are some good rolls. That is I'm definitely a hit. Oosh. Five and that. That's Dude. exactly what was needed to take it down. So the arrow goes oh, in. Nice. Finds like whatever vital organ is inside this thing. Perfectly hits it. And it just, yeah, shrivels up next to its uh, other half. And just... And it is dead. Yeah. Yeah, I just look over the two piles of goop that are on the floor. Mm. I always wonder how these creatures' biology works. And I, you know, note some stuff down. Uh, baby pull out a vial and collects a sample. sample. You ain't gonna drink that, are ya? I say as I put my, uh, I uh, sheath no. my bio. It might be useful down the line. Who knows? Uh huh. I sort of start, um, sort of searching around the room, see if there's anything of note. Okay. Um. So one second on that. Yeah, I will. After I'm done looking at the creatures, I'll I'll do the same. Specifically, like what part? Let's say, let's say Xandro, because you mentioned it first. Specifically, what part of the room are you going to search? Or... Well, the, what's this? Is this like an altar, like a table? Um, yeah, I would say. Let me see here. See if they have any exact note for what that object is. I don't think. It, I think it's just scenery, essentially. All okay. right. So yeah, I sort of want to look around this sort of area where the slime was. Um, see if it was like guarding anything. Yeah, so I mean, when you guys came in, kind of the slime was here, but it had been sort of slithering in from like up in this area here. So, so I'm gonna say basically like you're searching this corner. Yeah, I'll get Donna Bella to do that. Okay. <laughs> All right, one second. Let me see. All right, roll, uh, what is it, investigation? Search? On me or on Donabella? I uh, guess it would be Donabella if she's going to be the one that's investigating this area up here. That's good. She's got a plus four on that shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, what do you 28 plus four? Hey, a 20. 20, okay, good, because I'm glad it's high, because quite honestly, I'm trying to figure out where they have these numbers. Ah, oh, I found them, okay. Okay, well, yeah, that definitely... So, as she's searching around this entire area up here, she sort of notices that uh, this this door doesn't... Uh, or rather, this, this wall here in this area just doesn't feel quite right. Like, she's running her fingertips over top of it, and she just gets this slightest hint of... Like, the, the wall just suddenly kind of dips in a bit and comes back out and... So she sees this, like, entryway here. And I'm going to say, like, as she runs her fingers along the wall, she kind of does the same thing for that area right there. She kind of feels just these indentations. That's fine there. And I imagine she alerts you guys, like, hey, there's something up with these, these walls here. Huh. Well done. I'm sure... I'm sure any college will accept you at this rate. Let's see what we have over here, shall we? Okay, so... Uh, I'm still going to investigate this door here. This one right here. Okay. So yeah, as you're, as you're uh, at that door, or at that part of the of the wall you kind of notice that it, it it does like swing open a bit and when you um when you do that you kind of reveal this hallway
Oh. Uh, what do I see through this door? So as you swing open that door, you reveal this hallway. Mm. Seth, you got anything? Found uh, another hall. Uh, might be more to this place than we initially thought, heavily. Uh, this is my favorite part. I'm gonna enjoy this. Yeah. Where do you want to head first? Uh, you lead the way. And as we go forward, I'm just gonna slap myself with a hill and work. So which way are you headed? Um, I'd sort of head down this way. All right. So as you get to the bend, you can see that the uh, the hallway opens up around this corner, and I'm gonna slowly like reveal parts of this because you'd be able to see all the way to this bend, I would say. And let me go here. So. And then maybe as you get down to that bend, um, it's pretty difficult going at this point. You can maybe see like up that part, but this rubble that's in the way is starting to prevent you from passing through that part. So it's kind of a, you know, you can maybe feel air blowing through, maybe have musty smells because this place hasn't been, hasn't been accessed in who knows how long, but... Uh, the ceiling in this part of the of the of the tunnel is just completely caved in, and you can't you can't get past. Well, that's disappointing. Want to head your way? Yes, uh, shame. I have been in some very interesting things there, and yeah, let's go the other tunnel. All right. So as you get up this way, you can see all the way down this hall to a door and on that side you can see um, all the way to the uh, the west or the the left side and as you as you're looking down the left I mean you can immediately tell that the entire ceiling has fallen in on that area and it's there's lots of rubble and and you don't even sense any air passing through on that side it's just like deadlocked mm. only one way forward Okay, so as you get to the door, are you going to open it, uh, uh, kick it yeah, in? Yeah, I'll, I'll try to gently open it at first, and if that's not possible, I will, I guess, try to like force it open. Yeah, as you uh, reach down and jiggle the handle or whatever, it just it, it just opens right up. There's no, no, it's not locked or anything like that. And then as you walk inside, you kind of reveal this chamber. And you can see, like, yeah, about like that. And in the si inside this chamber, there are three stone bed frames that stand against the uh, east wall. So, like, over here along this wall, there are these really nice... Well, I mean, they're not nice, but they're not sacks on the floor either um nothing special about them uh they're just they're just bed frames um any any sort of bedding is is long gone uh rotted away and but that that's all that you can really see in this chamber are there not any sort of like containers or anything or no just the uh just the bed the stone bed frames uh, can I, like, try to investigate to see if I can, like, find anything underneath the frames or maybe, like, any signs of, uh, who might, may have lived here in ages past? So you want to just kind of do a general investigation of the room? Yes, yes. Um, yeah, roll, um, I think it's investigation. Uh, 21. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, as you're, as you're poking around in the room, you're kind of looking at these, these, uh, bed frames and they don't seem particularly remarkable. 
although being that you're such an academic, you do find it interesting and you find maybe the, um, you find maybe the structure interesting just purely from a, 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 a historical information perspective, you can definitely realize that this is an ancient place. But as you kind of continue around the room, you, uh, similar to kind of how Donabella did, uh, you're kind of running your fingers up along the wall and you, you sense that uh, this area right here is a, uh, there's something funny about that wall right there. Well, the agents are clearly trying to hide something. A secret door behind a secret door. Secret door inception. Must be pretty special, then. Well, bloody well be. Yeah, I walk forward. Okay, so as you go into this room, it sort of opens up and you can see all the way down to this doorway. Let me just kind of open up some more of this here. And uh, let me see what's this room. Yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting. Like they don't have like treasure per se, but so what you see in this room that you're in is uh, there's a empty stone font that juts out of the south wall, and there's sort of a a stone wardrobe against the east wall, holding on to the rotted remains of these two suits of red leather armor, and. Um, and you can tell that these were some sort of vestments that had been worn by priests. Um, and they're just now completely ruined and worthless. Yeah, um, I just... Inside these coats at all? Like, in, in any of the pockets, if they have any? They are uh, completely rotted through. And like if you, if you even touch them, they just kind of disintegrate. But um, sort of as an uh, academic yeah. point to uh, set, you can tell that these were worn by the priests of Abathar. Abathar? Um, what would I know about that deity? Probably a whole heck of a lot. Can I just, like, roll a religion check? Uh, you can definitely do that. And I will tell you, I will actually have to do some research on... Abathar to give you any useful information. I don't have that right, All right in front yeah. of me. That's it's a twenty three. Yeah, and so yeah. I'll i I'll get you some information on Abathar and get that back to you. So this door, are you interested in the door or are you just gonna Oh yes. Alright. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I, like, sort of just, like, tap one of the bodies on the shoulder, and I say, they have the fire, bring you peace at the thereafter, and I walk towards the door. So as you go through the door, you get into this hallway, and you can see to both ends of it, and, uh, I can almost probably just about open up the whole map now, but, um, down this way from this other side uh, of the hallway so sort of going this way you can now tell that there was also a doorway here you couldn't tell before from the other side but from this side you can tell that you could have uh, come through there as well All right and as you look down to the east so in this direction um, you can tell that that ceiling is, is fallen in and there's a bunch of rubble on the floor but m maybe just at the it, it, there's this sense of you know air possibly uh, passing through you're not entirely sure but maybe well let's see what's Behind door number three. Yeah, door, door number, number two, many. Yeah. 
So, uh, as you open that door, there's a lot of nothing inside that as well. So, yeah, it's been a maybe a disappointing as far as like a treasure hunt goes, but uh, inside of E10, or excuse me, I didn't mean to say that, inside of that room, um, you do see that sort of buried underneath the rubble, there is a skeleton and you can tell that it was a like a dwarf priest because it's wearing some sort of red leather armor but it, like like before it's been here for a long time long enough that it's completely rotted through as well so it's not like yeah it's not like you could even take it and use it um, and you can also tell from where the dwarf's remains are at that uh, he was probably working in this room and the, and the ceiling collapsed in on top of him and killed him. But, uh, but yeah, around his neck you do see a holy symbol of Abathar. It's a tiny jeweled dagger on a silver chain. And it's inscribed with uh, some dwarvish ruins. And I believe you read dwarvish? Yes, I know how to speak dwarvish. Yeah, so you have no problem reading what it says on there. It says, greed is good. Greed is good? It says, greed is good. Oh. Okay. I'm going to come in and say, ooh, that was valuable. Yeah, this is probably Dang. appropriate for this is probably appropriate for you. Let's hand on the necklace. Okay. So, I, I, yeah, I, t I snatch at my hands. Okay. Is it so? It's like a small dagger. It's not like an actual dagger. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a tiny jeweled dagger. It's on it's on a silver chain, so it almost sounds so, so to me it's like, like a decoration, a, like a decoration, like a necklace. But it, looking at it, it does appear to have value. So ah, I'm gonna pocket it. All right. I must warn you, Drow. It would seem that greed might be what's got the better of these people. I sort of look around and say, Well, if it is, where's their horde? I don't know. Perhaps some other adventurers came here before us. Perhaps whatever civilization built this place. Uh, made sure that anything valuable was long gone before it became proper ruins. Anything could have happened, really. One thing I actually did forget, so I'm going to mention this now. When, um, when Donabella was searching up in that corner, kind of going all around like this area here, she also noticed that this pillar was suspicious and in basically inside that pillar uh, when you guys were up there in that area fiddling about um, you found uh, it's like it's that there's like a false rock in the base of the pillar basically and when you pulled it out um, some dwarf skulls uh, fell out and they were old and just kind of turned to dust as soon as they hit the floor but at the very bottom of that of that pillar of that false bottom there were uh 15 gemstones oh boy oh baby yeah i totally forgot about that when we were up there that's fine. Well, we, I was trying to say so... we, we did that as soon as we came back through. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, I was trying to be so careful about which part I was revealing, and I just I forgot that that pillar hadn't already been revealed. Um, are these gemstones just uh, simply cut gems, or are they, like, shaping into anything? So, um, at least... The information I have here, it, they're just listed as 15 gemstones. I don't have any specific, uh, anything more specific than that. All right. All right, I will But they are gemstones, five. so they're going to be worth something. Yeah, I'll take five of them, and I'll just say, well, we found your uh, 
loot. I'm gonna sort of reach in, sort of try and grab five and chuck them over to um, Donabella and reach in and take five for myself. Okay, so you each have five gemstones. Let me actually make mm -hmm. some quick note here for that. And uh, while I'm doing that, are you guys gonna look around anywhere else in the room? Are you gonna call it done and dusted? Well, there's two other rooms I've seen. Yeah. I will probably like do like one less furrow look in like this main chamber room before going to like the other two rooms we haven't really explored yet. Okay, so you walk up here and uh, we'll say that you kind of explore down this area here basically. So let me open all that up. So as you go into there, it's uh, it's pretty similar to the situation that you found in some of these other rooms where the ceiling's collapsed in, there's a bunch of rubble lying about, and there's nothing remarkable in there. Um, and you can tell probably uh, when you get inside here, um, you know, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that this area was once connected to over here, but... Uh, you know, that with that ceiling collapsed in, um, it's blocked that passage, and, you know, you certainly wouldn't want to try to dig your way through, because it's going to be a way, it's going to go to nowhere, or at least nowhere that you can't get to more easily. Okay. Um, is that it for sort of this corridor? Um, did you say you were investigating this corridor, or... Yes. All right, so I'm going to say go ahead and roll another investigation in that corridor because I don't think you've really looked around thoroughly other than just kind of what your eyes can see. 19. 19. So another very good investigation. And uh, I'll just go ahead and open this up without any mystery. Um, you, there's another secret passageway that comes through here. And as you walk down the hallway, you can sort of see... Uh, this there's a door here and you can see all this and you can see there's a door there let me go ahead and open all of this up now this looks more like it i say as a sort of um open up the north northern door all right so yeah as you open up the north door you immediately notice that it just connects back out to the uh the main chamber um again the 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 secret passageway from this side is much more obvious. And yeah, you can tell, oh, well, that just goes where we came from. I sort of put my head out and say, not this way, uh, go the other way. Yeah, so Don Bell kind of comes down here through this passageway and follows you guys in. And, um, and yeah, that doorway is not hard to open either. Nothing tricky about it. You go in and... Um, and I would say, once again, uh, Set and Xandro, both of you guys, realize that the room that you're now standing in is the other end of the room that you came from where you found the silver dagger and the priest, with the uh, or the dead priest. So when he was working on that room over there, this entire ceiling just completely collapsed in, killed him. And um, yeah, you wouldn't wouldn't do you any good to try to, like, tunnel your way through because you can just walk around. And it's I wonder what they were doing here. Probably one religion. Yeah. Well, it was something that I've all agreed. After all, Xanifar is the the dwarven god of well, greed. And this particular chamber contains nothing of value. Oh, well, that might just be it, it would seem. Well, at least they're not leaving empty handed. Yeah, got something out of this. And I got something myself. Yeah, a whole vial of slime. Lucky <laughs> yeah. you. 
And a little more knowledge than I had before. Three slimes are they're dissolved into the into the floor by now. There's no no real trace of those guys left. All right, so uh, you guys heading back up uh, to the exit, I assume. Uh, mm -hmm. yep. Okay, so as you uh, as you get back up this way, let me switch pages here. That takes you back out here. Uh, I have so many pages. It's like <laughs> too many. Might have overdone it. And let me bring her token back out. So, yeah, as you guys come back out, uh, the dwarves, they're, they've, just, they've just been sitting out there this entire time, kind of listening to uh, whatever's going on inside, but having none of it. And so and they, they so so you you made it you, you you survived. How about the uh, the jelly? I heard all kinds of squeals and screams. Did you guys have any luck killing that thing? Or oh yeah, super easy. Oh, dope. So uh, one of the dwarves, uh, dazzling, kind of peeks in through the corner there, maybe just to verify and sees the 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 slimy remains of the the jelly that once was and says oh, very good excellent excellent uh much appreciated and yeah we can continue on with our job now um as far as your town master goes uh we're we're not gonna come back to the to the village of Fandolin. we we need to get our work done here but uh thank you for the warning and uh, we know the town master's quite uh, concerned about uh, all the goings on in and around the area of Fandolin. So uh, we'll uh, we'll give you these stones that we promised you, these uh, sending stones. And uh, we'll also give you this letter. And he just hands you a, a letter that they've kind of written really quickly there just to let you Sorry know. Sorry about that. Uh, what's that? I it without like, there, my bad. Oh, okay. Uh, so, well, basically, what I was saying, I don't know how much you missed. The dwarves, they're they are making good on their claim to give you those sending stones. So they hand them to you guys. They just kind of hand them out. Whoever takes them, they just let whoever takes them take them. And they also penned a letter really quick just to say, so that you can give to the town master to let them, to let the town master know that you were here and they did get the warning but they're going to stick around and they're going to continue on with their their jobs they they tell you basically they're not worried about the dragon getting inside the mine so they'll just they'll make sure that whatever activities they have they stay out of the open area out here and they'll uh continue working inside the mine and you know they're well out of harm's way the dragon's not going to be able to get in there and get them all right and yeah i uh I do let the dwarves know that I, I don't know if you know this already, but this would seem to be the ruins of a temple dedicated to Abathar. Abathar, you say? How how'd you come across that? We found some We found some uh well decayed skeletons wherein the the red red robes that that Abafar priests are known to wear, as well as a uh, I look towards Andrew. Do you mind uh, showing our friends here that that necklace I gave you? I sort of pull it out of my pocket and sort of like dangle it in front of my face. Uh, and they're they're just completely beside themselves. They're like, we have looked on every inch of that temple. Where did you find such a thing? Well, I guess you... I guess... I guess you did, didn't quite have the eye for it. Yeah, because ba basically, essentially, they, they didn't even know that these other areas existed that you guys found. They, they've only been in the in the inter-sanction of, of, uh, of the temple where the jelly was at, so they had no idea... That these other areas were there. Uh, well, well, I sort of repocket the dagger yeah. and say, 
There was also a, uh, a pillar full of dwarven skulls. Um, I don't know if that will put you off or anything. Just, yeah, they both. Just FYI, they both immediately like, horrified at that, and uh, they're yeah, they're very put off by that. Well, uh, well, if you want to see it for yourself, the the doorways have been opened. Yeah, uh, thank you guys. That's uh, certainly more than we could have asked for, and uh, thank you for taking care of the jelly. We can definitely get on with our work. Uh, you guys seem a bit worse for the wear, like the jelly may have uh, had had at least a bit of bite out of you. Do you want to stick around for the night, and I don't suppose you're going to want to go traveling at this hour. You can always take up sanct sanctuary inside the temple. It's well fortified and nothing's getting through those doors once we shut them well we know it's safe now that will be a good idea although I do have a again a kind of a bad feeling about staying in a place that belonged to let's just say not exactly a good DD well, it's uh, certainly up to you guys, but, uh, you know, we'll, we're going to be here working and, you know, we'd love to sit down, maybe have some drink with you, have a, have a bite to eat. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll watch your backs throughout the, throughout the night while you rest. I just don't want to see you rushing back off uh, so, so late in the day and, you know, having having exhausted yourselves fighting that jelly and exploring, you know, you might be a bit a bit tired and, and you're definitely not going to make it back to Phandalin before sun goes down. So, uh, you know, it's up to you, not your dad. Whatever you want to do. Sounds like a sound ideal to me. I mean, definitely safer than heading all the way back up there uh, this summer night. Yeah. So, if you want to sleep outside, go ahead. Okay, so, uh, and, and I think Donabella is probably, like, leaning towards, you know, she's almost, like, practically walking back to the safety of the doors as you guys are having this conversation. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to head inside and sort of um, look at Sept with a sort of uh, look. In in inviting look. What? Alright, so I'm guessing you guys kind of all go back in to this sanctuary area and uh, and, the, and then as you do, the dwarves follow you in and, and, I, and I can't do this on the map, but they kind of shut this set of double doors behind so that uh, like this set of doors here, they kind of close them off. And that set of doors, so that's so that you're kind of safely locked in, and and then they offer you uh, some wine skin. So they just kind of, you know, they have a certain amount of supplies that they have here on the site, and they kind of offer you guys some drink and say, yeah, you know, you're uh, you're much safer in here for the night, you know, uh, especially that dragon that you're talking about flying around. You never know; it might decide that. Uh, it's going to swoop down on you and so uh stay in here and uh we'll you know we'll help you guys keep an eye out for any other creepy crawlies that might be lurking around uh, again we can't thank you enough for taking care of that jelly and uh and while they're saying that they're they're both investigating these new areas that uh you know that you've kind of un unveiled so they've kind of handed you these wine skins and maybe a little bit of uh, bread and then they're they're gone they're like you know christmas morning kid in a candy store they're just checking all this stuff out wow 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 mm. you know and they're we already told them we already told them to explore those areas yeah but they haven't seen it firsthand so they're just kind of oh i'll say i'll say that in character yeah yeah uh let them have their fun yeah <sighs> I sort of like uh, sit down, leaning up against whatever this thing is. Well, if a piece of rubble falls in your head, it's not my problem. <laughs> hey, you were saying if uh, 
a bunch of rocks do fall down on top of us and kill us all. Never know when that's going to happen. Could happen tonight. Who knows? If it's what the gods of fate decide, then who am I to argue about it? So, yeah. I don't know about you, but I'd be a little bit pissed off if they decided now would be a good time to kill us off. <laughs> okay, and uh, with that, I will say, since you guys have taken care of the imminent threat in the area and you kind of need to have a rest for the night, it would be a pretty good opportune time to stop this adventure for tonight and pick it up another time. Cool. Ah. <sighs> Yeah, that is a lot different on this side of things. Cool. Yeah. How'd you find it though? You enjoy it? It's enjoyable. It's stressful. It's I feel I feel a lot of stress. Yeah, you sort of once you get into it, it's it's uh you feel a lot better. Yeah, there's yeah. a couple um, things that one, came up. One tip I will say is that don't worry if your players aren't going to do a specific thing that you were expecting them to do or yeah that that's or definitely like do some, yeah or do something completely out of the field because it it should be should be expected basically yeah that's definitely one thing like from reading the dmg and such like i'm trying my best to not like have a path that i've already figured out in my head that you guys are going to do like I, i've thrown that idea out the only part of that that I did have was at the very very beginning when we first started um, that initial interaction with you guys meeting on the trail I completely fabricated that that's not part of the adventure and meeting uh, Donatella there with the spider right that was my way of bringing the sidekick into the adventure because as I as I mentioned to you like in our session zero the way the adventure has it said is that like I literally show you guys the the uh, the cards because there are physical cards that comes with this and you pick one. And I just think that's terrible. That's like such a non immersive way of bringing the sidekick in. Uh, so all that was railroaded essentially. Like I decided this is how it's going to start. Um, and then, yeah, like the jelly, like I knew that was an encounter and I just completely forgot to bring in the token and I forgot to have that stat block ready, all that stuff. Cause I was f so thinking about so many other you know, parts of the map, making sure I had all these different chambers set up and ready to go from page to page that I just completely forgot about that. Um, other than that, I guess most everything was like, okay. Uh, again, some of the rolling, yeah, I'm gonna, I gonna probably forget that again, how certain things get rolled. So, but, uh, thank you guys for putting up with my newbie. <laughs> Oh, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, I hope it, it was at least that was a fun session, though. Yeah. Yeah, I, I honestly do like your GM's uh, DM style so far. All right. Well, that's good, good to know. Yeah, you're you do a good job of like actually like explaining what the environment looks like and what characters are doing and all that. All right, with that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop this local recording here. Is there anything else you guys want to say before I hit the stop button? Hi, local recording. I miss you. <laughs> yeah, and like Bye. I said, maybe possibly I'll put this up on YouTube. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. I'll maybe watch back through it and then decide. All right, so goodbye, goodbye YouTube if I put this on YouTube. <laughs> goodbye, maybe YouTube. <laughs>